professionalism in clinical practice setup for an ideal homeopathy clinic how can your practice stand out among the crowd for that first we need an analysis about the current scenario whether the prior practice or the government job which is more better according to me the private practice is the best option than any other job because that will give you more social reputation and the financial maturity government that will give you a fixed salary that will be a small compared to the earnings from the private practice and moreover the social reputation that is only for the private practitioners and why private practice a clinician in private practice enjoys an autonomy that cannot be experienced in a hospital based setting and the service provided by small private clinics are heavily dependent and and uh, by the significant part of indian population so the assuring the quality service is therefore very very important so indian population they are mainly depending upon the small private clinic and which one is uh, best for the private practice the whether the allopathy ayurveda dental or homeopathy and what would be the reason for that that we have to justify in allopathic system of medicine at least a post graduation is required that means after the mbbs 2 to 3 years of preparation and 2 to 2 to 3 years of post graduation so at least 10 to 11 years that may be required to earn something from that profession and what about the ayurveda and one of the main drawback of ayurveda currently that is the cost of the medicine the common man cannot afford the cost of ayurvedic medicine and the second reason lot of quack practitioners are there in ayurveda people are very much fond of this uh, traditional practitioners without any qualification and what about the dental system of medicine the first thing the cost of the clinic that is too high majority of the doctors can't afford the cost of a, a dental clinic and the second one they will never get the first hand patient suppose for a toothache they will uh, take the home remedies first if that fail they will visit the nearest medical shop and purchase some medicine and if that fails they will uh, contact the nearest home, uh, homeopathic doctor or ayurvedic doctor or the general physician in modern system of medicine and take some medicine and only after that they will visit a dentist so the first hand patients are comparatively rare in dental system of medicine and the cost of the clinic is too high and what about the homeopathy immediately after the bhms they will earn their bread and butter the cost of the clinic is comparatively less comparing to dental ayurveda and allopathy system of medicine and the cost of the medicine is also comparatively less comparing to other system of medicine so homeopathy or the bhms that is best for the private practice and comparing to other system more opportunity in homeopathy not only for the private practice but also for the government job see nearly 12000 bhms graduates are coming from the homeopathic medical college but 60000 mbbs students and 15265 bams students passing out from the ayurvedic medical colleges across india so more placement and the facility i mean the option for the private practice is comparatively high in homeopathy because less number of doctors not only for the private practice but also for the government job because we are less in number comparing to other system of medicine so in they need more homeopathic doctors and it is better to have some additional courses immediately after the bhms see the Uh, the essential qualification men- mentioned here now this is a scenario across india the essential qualification either mbbs bhms bms bms bds etc but if you have some additional qualifications like the mba in healthcare 
or master of health or master of hospital administration you will get more salary so the salary difference uh, if you have only mbbs bhms or bms you will get only 50000 but if an, if you have an additional qualification like um, this mba in healthcare or the master of public health you will get 70000 per month so an additional qualification that is uh, essential nowadays in order to get a good government job now what about the scenario in the allopathic system of medicine especially in kerala more than 10000 doctors are without any mbbs doctors are without any job they are jobless people they can't start their private practice without a post graduation also so this is a scenario lot of allopathic modern medicine doctors are without any job now see the difference uh, this is a dentist training that is required and the salary is only between 10000 to 5000 sorry 1000 to 5000 per month so job notification for a dentist 1000 to 5000 per month but see the advertisement below for a chicken cutter the salary is 23500 so that's the scenario about the salary structure in private sector for the homeopathic ayurvedic dental or modern medicine people so it is better to start with our own private practice that will give you more social reputation and also the financial maturity. Now the qualified practitioners and institutions across India. In allopathy, we have more practitioners, 6,70,000. In Ayurveda, 3,50,000. But in homeopathy, 2,23,883 people are there. Qualified practitioners in homeopathy. So India needs more homeopathy practitioners. The existing homeopathy practitioners will get more job and more private practice because we are less in number comparing to other systems of medicine. Now, how we can survive in the midst of the free treatment programs that is running across the state in different I mean, different states in India? For example, in the case of Kerala, a lot of free treatment programs by the government of Kerala. This may be the scenario in some other states also. Aryoki Kiranam. That means all children below, below 18 for all diseases, they will get free treatment. Pain and palliative care, the tunnel, Kanivu, Vyomitram for the old age people, comprehensive health, health insurance scheme, Sugrudam, that means the free cancer treatment. Shruti Tarangam, the government is gi giving hearing aid for up to 5.5 lakh. Talolam, heart treatment, up, heart treatment up, to eight, up to 18 years, that is free. Samashwasam, monthly dialysis aid, mother and child, child treatment, 30 days free in Kerala. Like Vayo Madhuram, that's a treatment for the free treatment for, program for the diabetes mellitus. And moreover, the OP time in government, the government colleges, I mean the government dispensaries across the state is from, that is extended to up to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So people can take the treatment even after, after their job in the evening hours. And what about the homeopathy? More number of patients in government institutions. Nowadays, the majority of the homeopathic institutions and the dispensaries and colleges have more number of patients than the private practitioners. And the PSA dispensaries in all panjayats of Kerala. Ayush and NRHM homeopathy dispensaries. Lot of charitable dis homeopathy dispensaries are running across the Kerala. And they are giving more number of medicines, especially in the government sector. More ointments and more biochemics, especially in the strict form. Still, a recent survey on the medical field, what happened to the small hospitals in the modern system of medicine, majority of the small hospitals closed. Only the super, super specialty hospitals are running across the state. That too with the help of the health insurance scheme. Otherwise, it is very difficult to survive. Then where is the scope for a high cost homeopathy? In the midst of these free treatment programs, the homeopathy practitioners are surviving. Especially in Kerala, the majority of the new generation practitioners are from the homeopathic sector. They are earning their bread, not only the bread and butter, but good social reputation. So, the leading practitioners, especially among the new generation, that is mainly from the homeopathic sector in Kerala. So, don't worry about the ever-increasing number of doctors. India has 6,000 births in a minute. So, don't worry about the ever-increasing number of doctors. 
and this is the population of the world and india and the population of kerala that is 3 crore 45000 sorry 3 3 million 45000 something like that's a big score now which system is better whether the it the business real estate or doctor and why which sector is the best for a new generation students it that means they have to work around the uh, around the clock and there is no security for their job even though they are giving a good salary in around 50000 per month they have to work 24 hours even in even during the holidays and there is no job security and what about the business we have to invest a lot and there is a lot of dead money also and what about the real estate that is also miserably failed because of the recent financial constraints across India. Now doctor's profession is the, one of the best thing at least they can earn their bread and butter even, the, even in the midst of uh, any other financial constraints. So the doctor's profession that is better comparing to any other profession like the IT, the business or the real estate. The quality of physician especially in chronic case taking always keep in mind. Circumspection tact, knowledge of human nature, caution on conducting the inquiry, patience in an eminent degree. Always remember this thing throughout your life. And in the past, the doctor was God, considered as the supreme authority. Doctor was God and considered as the supreme authority, but the scenario is entirely changed now. Patient as a customer and the doctor as a service provider. So customer is the king nowadays. We are only service providers, so we must provide the best service, even in the government sector or in the private sector, whatever it may be. So patient as a customer. Now we have to deal different types of personalities. Some type of patients are very difficult to deal with. They are demanding, annoying, unrealistic, loud and objectionable patients that you can come across in your clinical practice. Another type of patients are desirable. That means they are pleasant, easygoing, intelligent, accommodating and knowledgeable person. So it is very easy to deal with this type of patients. Others they are timid, questioning the doctor, unprepared, lacking in knowledge and uncertain about what they want or need. But we have to handle all this type of personalities. That is one of the toughest jobs. But the customer satisfaction, that is very important. Customer satisfaction, patient as a customer and the doctor as a service provider. Now, what are the non-medical expectations of the patient? Non-medical expectation of the public. We have to honor the appointments. Appointment system should be accurate but flexible also. In, type, in certain instances of emergency, we have to give you should be flexible in the case of appointment. Communicate well with them in day-to-day -day language and medical words should be avoided as far as possible. Nowadays, even though the patients are using the medical terminology, it is better to avoid the medical jargons or terminology at the end of the doctor. To listen to their problem patiently and give them patiently and give them enough time so they master the art of listening and show personal concern for the patient. Not only for the diagnosis, suppose if you diagnose a case of ADHD or meningitis, but we must know how to talk to a mother of ADHD or how to communicate that your child has meningitis now. That is also the toughest attack. The communication between the patient and the bystanders, that is the toughest task nowadays. So not only the diagnosis of the disease, but how to talk to a mother of ADHD or meningitis, that is also very important. And how to inform the death in case of emergency, that is also a toughest task. That means we must have good communication skill. The homeopathic doctor or whatever it may be, they need good communication skill comparing to any other system of medicine. So this is the background information. An analysis of the existing scenario. Now we decided to start a clinic. We decided to start a clinic. We must know your needs. 
So when deciding to set up an independent practice, the basic requirements are the knowledge. That means the basic knowledge only is sufficient. Don't worry about that. It is very difficult to start the practice after acquiring the entire knowledge. That is not possible in the medical system. So with this basic knowledge of after BHMS or MBBS or BAMS, you can start the practice. We need some instruments and medicines and we are expecting the large number of patients and we need some financial support either from the family or from some financial uh, institutions. So these are all the some basic needs and you have to conduct a survey. Observe the demand for a homeopathy in that area. You have to observe the demand for a homeopathy in that area. For example, an area with a retired or aged homeopath will need for a new doctor. So that is essentially required to conduct a survey whether a homeopathy doctor is required in that area or not. And how to select the best location for your clinic? How to select the best location for your clinic? That may be good near to the residences or educational institutions because uh, there is a flow of individuals or the people across the residential areas or the educational institutions. And you have to observe the communities living in that locality around. And your professional success depends upon how acceptable you are to that local people. How acceptable you are to that local people. So we have to observe the communities living in the localities around. And always remember an urban area offers more opportunities than a difficult rural area. So you have to opt an urban area or a rural area but it is better to avoid a difficult rural area. Because there is always flow from the difficult rural area to rural area and from the rural area to urban area. That is a flow of people. If you started a clinic in a difficult rural area, your practice will not grow beyond a number of patients. Because there are only few people, few families living around that difficult rural area or a rural area. They will depend on you, but beyond a limit, your practice will not grow. So always select an urban area or a rural area. It is better to avoid selecting a difficult rural area. If you would like to have a good private practice, a flourishing private practice, it is better to avoid selecting a difficult rural area. And places of worship that offer a fertile ground for, ground for network and social contacts. Because there are a lot of people coming to the temples or the masjid or this um, church. So place of worship, your clinic somewhere near to the places of worship that offers a fertile ground and you can have good social contact also. So always think about the future. Always think about the future. Select a location which provides ample growth opportunities for you and your family, socially and economically. Socially and economically. This is called the highway mindset. Think about your family. So select a location which provides ample growth opportunities for you and your family, socially and economically, near some educational institutions so that your children will not suffer. Hmm? So always think about future before selecting a location. And keep in mind this, this thing for, for the success. You will get patience just by being visible. You will get a lot of patience just by being visible. I, that means your clinics should be in a visible area. Always remember never opt the back, uh, the back side of a building even though the rent is comparatively less. A clinic in a shopping center or a mall. That means always 24 hour flow of people in shopping centers or malls. A clinic in a busy street or a junction because you are more visible. A, a clinic in a medical complex or in a hospital complex you can opt because a lot of people are coming 24 hours around the hospital or a medical complex. So always remember the reachability and the visibility. That's a two important thing. The people can reach your clinic without any hurdle. That means uh, uh, that should have some um, bus route. So the reachability, that's the most important thing while selecting the location for the clinic. And the visibility, that is also very, very important. You will get a lot of patients just by being visible. Your clinic should be in a visible area, not behind the 
or the back side of a building even though the rent is comparatively less so always keep in mind the reachability and visibility that these are the two important things for selection in the selection of a location so whether to rent or buy which one is best a rented building or you can purchase the building or the building space or the room space that's everything depend upon your financial background and if your husband has a, a transferable job it is better to opt a rented building than purchasing a building space and always opt a ground floor very very important and nowadays majority of the people especially after the age of 40 they have knee pain or the back pain or any other type of disabilities because of pain so the ground floor is the best option rather than selecting the first floor or second floor of a building because the people aged over 40 or 50 it is very difficult for them to reach the first floor or ground floor even though the rent is comparatively high in ground floor it is better to opt the ground floor for a clinic now what are the requirements the basic requirements for setting up a homeopathic clinic so the size of the clinic that means a doctor chamber we need a doctor chamber a space for the pharmacy or reception or pharmacy come reception that is also possible and we need a good waiting room that should be more spacious and we need a parking area and the required staff the staff are necessary to handle this pharmacy the reception or the waiting area and also for the staff for the cleaning purpose so the parking area that is an unavoidable thing now the basic requirements while uh, designing the chamber of the clinic that should have some good interior with the light and ventilation because you are sitting here for uh, uh, four or five hours or from 9 a.m. to up to 6 or 7 p.m. so good interior with the light and ventilation we need an examination room or an examination area a dispensing room the facility for the fee collection it is better to collect the fee by the receptionist or the pharmacist rather than doctors hmm? and we have to we must have the space for the registers and documents and the facility for the waste collection the dustbin the sink tap and toilet these are all some basic requirements for designing a clinic and the basic equipments compared to any of the other system we need only few equipments stethoscope bp apparatus the mercury type is preferred over the digital type and a percussion hammer torches ent head mirror weigh scale that is for the infant and also for the adult two type of weighing machines are required and the IV set scalp plane and IV stands these are also required in a clinic and what are the things to be displayed in your clinic that means your name board your letter pad letterhead and the reg registration certificate we have to display the registration certificate in our clinic in addition to the name board and something about the reception area you have to design your reception area and as seen in the image slide the design impresses the patient about the quality of treatment you offered remember the reception area impresses the patient about the quality of treatment you offered the lobby is made of stress-free and comfortable for the visitors with a tv set music system or lighting etc etc that should be the reception area should be comfortable the waiting area should be stress-free and comfortable now what about the interior design attention must be given to the ventilation or the air quality always remember about the noise pollution because you have to sit here for long hours throughout your life so select a location with less noise pollution and the cabinet for the files and medicine these things you must be uh, must be in your mind while designing the interior the flooring surface not only enhance the look of the clinic but creating a comfortable feeling the flooring and the loom, room look more spacious and comfortable if you are opting light colors or the light tiles and the painted walls are cost effective and easy to clean also it is better to avoid this uh, marble walls or the tiled walls it is better to have the painted walls that is cost effective and easy to clean also and you must visit a few clinics of your teachers or the seniors before you start 
Now, how to design the front office? Remember the sitting arrangement. That should be comfortable. Comfortable sitting arrangement for the doctor, for the patient and for the bystanders. It is better to opt uh, means anatomically designed chair for the doctor. And always opt a stool rather than chair for the patient. And also the facility for the I mean, seating arrangement for the bystanders. And the seating arrangement for, for the receptionist and pharmacist is, is different from that of the doctor or the bystanders. They need a chair or a, I mean a stool that, have, that is highly positioned comparing to that of the doctor or the bystanders. And suitable reading materials in the waiting room. The public, they are more interested in the uh, reading materials like that of the cinema magazines rather than anything else. So, suitable reading materials in the waiting room, that is for the children also. The children magazine is also and the ladies magazine, the cinema magazines and also the periodicals by the different publishers or the newspapers. So, different types of variety of reading materials that should be there, especially for the children also. And the attractive painting, the light colors that is more preferred, then the room look or the area look more spacious also. And the toys and baby chairs, small type of toys and baby chairs. Remember, small chairs for the children or the babies. That is, uh, that is essential in our clinic. And the quietness and privacy with the soundproof chamber. That is also required, especially if you are designing the, the doctor chamber. Otherwise, the patient will not dis disclose anything, especially the sexual complaints or the personal complaints or the family history. So, the quietness and privacy with the soundproof chamber that is required for the doctor. And the facility for the drinking water and toilet. Always ensure the toilet facility is there in your building if you are renting, if you are renting out a room, rent out a building. So, always think about the toilet facility. And you have to ensure the toilet facility in your building and the facility for advanced booking. Even though they will not reach on time, the facilities for advanced booking is is is, a sufficient, is essential in the beginning of your private practice itself. Just have a separate phone number for the advanced booking, so that we can handle the every patient. Otherwise, you are, if you are if you don't have this facility for the booking, sometimes the patient will come in the beginning of your clinics. For example, your clinic time is four to eight p.m. Majority of the patient will come at 4, 4 p.m. We have to dispose this all these patients within the short span of time. They have not time. They have enough. The, the people or the patients have enough time to watch the cinema or to sit at the sit in the beach or in other areas. But they have less time if they reach the doctor. So it is better to have the advanced booking facility so that we can give enough time. We will get enough time for case taking also. Okay. Yes. Now we will see. Now we will see some good chambers, doctors' chambers. Designed by homeopathy doctors across India. A beautiful chamber by a doctor. See the reception area. We see the toys, small toys in the doctor's chamber. These are all something designed beautifully by doctors, homeopathy doctors across India. Reception area of Batras. The doctor's chamber that should look elegant, elegant. This look cute also. It's a waiting area, neat and clean waiting area. See the waiting area of Batras. And you can select this type of uh, multicolored or high colored background or tables that will attract this, the new generation and especially the children and babies. But never select a location like this. The doctor sitting in front of medicine. Hmm? The medicine shelf behind the doctor, that is not a good idea. See, always opt this type of stool or revolving, revolving type of stools are also nowadays available. Never opt a chair for the patient. 
chair is only for the doctor and the bystanders because otherwise if you are opting a chair it is very difficult to examine the patient reception area so the interior chamber the chamber of the doctor should look elegant so you can opt the service of an interior designer also for designing a doctor's office because they know better than us how to design perfectly within the available space the maximum utilize, utilization of the space that is possible if you are opting the service of an interior designer they can design within the available limits now something about the air hostess philosophy what is mean by an air hostess philosophy air hostess they have more reputation they are the center of attraction in a flight they have social reputation their salary is very high now see the same work they are uh, that is doing the housemaid air hostess is also doing the same more or less same work they are they are giving us food they are serving the food they are cleaning and they are providing water everything everything the same work is done by the housemaid also but see the salary difference the social reputation entirely different same type of job but different salary a highest salary and a different social reputation so if you are designing your clinic in an elegant way with the available financial constraints you will get more number of patients so design your clinic the interior chamber and also the exterior that should be elegant so that is the hair hostess philosophy that add the more reputation to your clinic that add more reputation to the homeopathy you will get more number of patients and you will get a high fee structure also if you are designing your clinic in an elegant way so always remember the hair hostess philosophy now select a chair with an anatomical feature structures designed for anatomically see on the top the top of the monitor is at the eye level or just below the eye level because you have to sit here for a long time from 9 am to 8 pm or 9 pm whatever it may be your practice time so select a good chair and the minimal bend of wrist if you are using the system minimal bend of wrist that should be up to between 90 to 120 degree and the monitor should be at the eye level and the back should be on the straight back should be straight elbows close to the body elbows close to the body and the backrest is supporting the lower back see the backrest supporting the lower back anatomically designed designed and adjustable uh, the chair and that should have some facility for adjusting the chair the height and also the tilt and front seat not pressing on the back of the knee our our the popliteal fossa should be free see the image the front of the seat not pressing on the back of the knees and feet flat on the ground or resting on the footrest so you have to adjust the height of the chair so the adjustable chair should be you have to purchase an adjustable chair on uh, chair only because the feet should be on the ground or resting on a footrest so now this type of chairs are available in the market anatomically this anatomical design so select a good chair that is affordable and also looking elegant and something about the name board and hoardings and the single name board inside the clinic is it, it is better to avoid a lot of name boards depending your qualification or this your consultation time or your accreditation or your presented designation whatever it may be it is better to have a single name board inside the clinic rather than a lot of boards and you can hop to the hoardings in the public places as you see on the right image that will give you more number of patients now we must incorporate some innovative concept that means the facility for the facility for the recording the case nowadays the concept is paperless clinic paperless clinics everything is digital so that you don't need lot of space for keeping these records your case records and it is very easy to find out a case record of a patient with them with a single mouse mouse click otherwise the pharmacist or receptionist has to spend a lot of time in to, in order to find out the case record of a particular patient so paperless clinic and you have to give top priority to the first time patients after starting your clinic give top priority to the first time patients you have to take the case in 
in detail and select the best remedy and offer the good service. And the third point, you must have good relation with the doctors of other systems of medicine and nearby hospital. Otherwise, they will blame you if, they pay, if some cases failed with you because of your negligence or because of your I mean, the improper medication, whatever it may be. If that if that people visit the near, nearby doctor of other system of medicine, the, other, the doctors from other system of medicine, they will blame you. So keep a good relation with the doctors of other system of medicine in your locality. And you must have tie up with the nearby hospitals in case of emergency. Suppose if you would like to have an IV for your patient, just give a letter to the nearest nearby small hospital for giving an IV or for catheterization or for removing the catheter, whatever it may be. You must have a tie up with a nearby small hospitals, no need of multi-speciality hospitals, but for handling some type of emergencies. Or for, for, or for some procedures, it is better to have a tie-up with the nearby hospitals. And what about the concept of free treatment program? I think it is better not to give an impression that your clinic has free treatment. Because the government already implemented a lot of program for the free treatment for the public, for the BPL or APL, whatever it may be. Free treatment programs are there, that is... Uh, inculcated by the government and also by the charitable institutions. So it is better to avoid giving an impression that your clinic has free treatment program. But you can give free treatment to the patient if they have no money or some if, are, if they have no sufficient fund, always give free treatment. Don't worry about that. So incorporate the innovative concept. How to hire the staff? That is also three important crucial factors are there in hiring the staff. That means the compatibility, education and experience. Always remember the compatibility, the education and experience. These are the three crucial factors for hiring the staff like the receptionist or the pharmacist. And discuss and clarify on salary, compensation, benefits, compensation, benefits if any and work timing etc. in detail. Suppose your clinic may be up to from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Some, sometimes they have to work beyond the 4 7 p.m. because Especially if you are dealing with a chronic case or complicated case, you may need more time to take the case. So discuss on about the work timing in detail. They should reach uh, on time or before time, otherwise, otherwise it is very difficult to start. So discuss everything in detail and review their performance and uh, compensate them with incentives at regular intervals. So they ha you have to give salary hike, you have to give something for the additional work or overtime work. Address their issues from a neutral point of view. For example, they need a chair or a stool with the, that should be positioned high. And the toilet facility or their work timing, everything they have to discuss with you in a neutral point of view. And hire a fresher and train them as a, this is a, one of the best option. Rather than selecting a receptionist or a pharmacist from any other work in any, with any other doctor. I mean, uh, that, uh, that means uh, that, that's very, very difficult for them to adapt to our method of prescription or our method of dispensing. So it is better to opt a fresher and train, train them. And avoid students and workers because at the time of examination or at the time of job, uh, they, have, they have a lot of other job also. It is very difficult for them to come to the clinic for a receptionist or pharmacist. At that time, they will take leave and that's, that will affect the... Uh, the working of our clinic also. It is better to opt a retired hand if available in your area, a retired clerk or a retired pun, they have, because they will get enough time. They have no, they have no constraint, the time constraints. They have no work at home also. If, if available, it is better to opt a retired hand or a youngster without any other work. Eh? If, if, she, if she is studying for the plus two or the degree course at the time of examination or at the time just before the examination it is very difficult for them to come to the clinic and nowadays less manpower because we have to give at least the basic salary that is uh, as per the instruction of the government so less man manpower more work and we need a support from your family also train your family members like the husband or wife or children how to dispense the medicine Suppose you are a pharmacist may be on leave because of fever or because of some family family issues or family programs or the festivals or marriage function in their home, they may not come. So at that time your family, your husband or wife or your, your children may support 
in your clinic so train them how to dispense the medicine and how to handle with the patient as a recep as a receptionist so we need the support from your family now what is uh, the most important quality of a homeopathic pharmacist the most important quality of a homeopathic pharmacist compared to ayurvedic pharmacist or allopathic pharmacist the most important quality is trustworthiness trustworthiness you cannot identify whether she has given this uh, this arsenic alba 30 or one or next omega 30 but in ayurveda that have some smell or consistency in allopathy system it is very easy to identify the medicine but in homeopathy even it is very difficult for the doctor to identify which medicine is given which potency is given so the trustworthiness that is the most important quality for a homeopathy pharmacist so select a person who is trustful and we need to have some random check also whether they are giving the correct medicine or correct potency suppose if you prescribed uh, chelidonium one hour suppose that medicine may not be there in your uh, in your means pharmacy but she will give another medicine like in chelidonium 200 or chelidonium 10 hour or any other medicine with one hour at the time of at the busy, during busy time so a random check is required and the cash dealings that should be perfect also because it is better to collect the fee from the patient by the receptionist or the pharmacist rather than by the doctor. So the trustworthiness and the pre-packing and booking is unavoidable to run a clinic smoothly. You have to pack the BTs, the blank tablets or the globules etc. for one month, for two weeks or for one week like that. Everything should be pre-packed. Then we need to have the medication only at the time of giving the medicine. So, Prepack everything, the globules, tablets, discs, whatever it may be for one week, two weeks, one month like that. And always give the medicine, if you, even though you are giving the, even, even though you give the placebo in the blank tablet or the globule, just uh, dispense it with the rectified spirit. Never give a blank tablet without some uh, smell or uh, the smell of the spirit. So always use the rectified spirit that is available in homeopathic pharmaceuticals. And so along with the remedy, if you are giving the blank tablets, always medicate it with the, or use the rectified spirit. And we must have the good 1M, 10M, CM, etc. But we need a random check whether the pharmacist is giving the correct medicine or not. So by selecting the medicine, by purchasing the medicine, no compromise on the quality. Always select the best medicine or the quality medicine from the reputed pharmacies only. And it is better to purchase sealed bottles rather than loose bottles. It is better to purchase the sealed bottles of 30 ml is enough nowadays. 30 ml is enough for a practitioner. And after that you can purchase 100 ml if you are after you are flourishing your practice. And always use genuine vehicles like the sugar of milk, the globules, BT, discounts etc. from reputed companies only. Otherwise lot of impurities are there in this vehicle. So always opt the best quality sugar of milk, the blank tablets or the globules of this kind. And always remember the quality packing and bottles. The quality the packing should be with the quality materials like good paper and also the good quality bottles for giving this uh, biochemic tablets or this globules. Hmm? So the quality packing and the quality bottles that is also add good reputation to your clinic. So if you are opting this type of uh, uh, means the Almaras or this uh, uh, shelf for the medicine, you can have a large number of medicine. You can, if you are opting the 30, the 30, the 30 ml bottle, you can place a large number of bottles in a limited space. So, always opt the 30 ml bottle and design this pharmacy like this so that you can place a large number of bottles within the available space. So, they take 30 ml that is sufficient in majority of the for clinical private practitioners. And what about the fee structure? And always remember there is no fixed fee charged by the doctor. Never collect a fixed free from fee from all the patients. For example, the, that doctor is charging 200 rupees for two week medicine. They will always come with 200 rupees. So if you are giving an additional mother tincher or some additional biochemic medications or some uh, uh, some mulling oil or some other oils as for the massaging or for other purpose or the eardrop, they will always give you 200 rupees only. 
So I never charge the same fee from all the patients coming from the from the same house. So they will think that the medicine is same. So there is no fixed fee. You can change the fee depending upon the nature of the disease or depending upon the time you took for the consultation, for the case taking, and if you have any, if you are giving any additional medicines or mother tinges or biochemical tablets, you have to charge additionally. So there is no fixed fee. Never charge the same. Never charge the same fee from all the members of a family, because depending upon the disease, the medicine may be different or the duration of the treatment may be different. So there is no fixed fee. Some charge less fee to attract a more number of patients, while others charge for the cost of facilities offered. If you are giving a good quality packing, good quality vehicles, and also good quality bottles, you need to charge more. So depending upon the cost of facilities offered, you can charge. Anyway, charge your patient reasonably only. Never charge too much. Okay, so charge your patient reasonably. And there is no, yeah, this may be the fee structure of a doctor nowadays. Consulting fee with the one-week medicine that will be rupees one fifty, and the first time registration. With the consultation fee with the one week medicine that may be two hundred and fifty, and consultation fee with the one week medicine for the second visit onwards one fifty, two fifty, two hundred. Everything depend upon the area of your practicing, or the nature of treatment you are giving, or the facilities you are offering to your patient. Now, what is the difference between doing your job and enjoying your job? As a clinician, you have to enjoy your job. As a practitioner. You have to enjoy your job; otherwise, it is very difficult. Now, see this uh, small movie, small video clip on the difference between doing your job and enjoying your job. So that's the difference between the doing the job and enjoying the job. Now, if you are buying a running clinic, there are certain things you must know that must be in your in your mind. Buying a running clinic, so evaluate the practice. Check the following few facts before buying a running clinic. is the practice is active and flourishing if the practice is not active and not flourishing it is better not to purchase that running clinic the financial status of the clinic in the last 3 years that you can easily assess from their it the reputation of the clinic the reputation of the clinic in that area suppose the doctor disposed of that clinic because of some malpractices or some criminal cases it is better not to buy that clinic so the reputation of the clinic the difference in the net and gross practice income the difference in the net and gross practice income and the average fees charged by the patient average fee charged from the patient if they charge 200 it is very difficult for you to charge 250 the patient will not come if you charge less like 150 they are the patient will not come in that instance also if you are changing the, the if you are following if you are not following the prescription pattern of the previous doctor the patient will not come to you in future so there are by buying a running clinic is a tough task if you are not following the same method of prescription if you are not following the same uh, vehicles or whatever it may be this medicines the number of medicine the reputation dose of the previous doctor you will never get the, the doctor the patients from the previous doctor they will go to some other doctors so always think about evaluating the practice before buying a running clinic and the punctuality always remember punctuality is the most important thing required for the success of a clinic the knowledge comes only second the punctuality this is the most important thing if your clinic time is 4 to 8 pm you should be there by before 4 o'clock and up to 8 o'clock 8 pm you should be there and be before that and after that you can go everywhere that's not an issue but if you are not coming on time your practice will not flourish even though you have good knowledge in the material medical property practice and medicine whatever it may be maybe so don't make the patient wait for you give a prior appointment in case of unavoidable circumstances convey a message to the concerned patient through our receptionist or pharmacist that will be your that you will be in the you may be in the traffic block or some other area because of or because of some other family issues or the death of a nearest relative you may be late for half an hour but you have to inform the patient in advance through your concerned receptionist or the pharmacist 
so always keep in mind punctuality that's the most important thing required for the success of a clinic and the knowledge comes only second if you are not coming on up to 4 o'clock the patient will come at 4:30 then you will change your time as 5 or 5 o'clock and the patient will change their time as 5:30 so at the end you will get only few number of patients and something about the lady doctors in all system of medicine whether it is homeopathy ayurveda or allopathy something wrong or something um, with uh, something that maybe they have need some good attitude or support from the family that we have to discuss why less lady doctors in private practice what would be the reason for that not only in homeopathy but in ayurveda and other system of medicine also less lady doctors in private private practice more women doctors graduated from homeopathy medical college than men that you can see in nursing in, in uh, dental or a uh, modern system of medicine or in allopathy means ayurveda system of medicine more women doctors graduated from colleges than men but that is not reflected in the number of practicing doctors only few of them are practicing because they have to look after their children the meetings and other household work a multitasking which everyone cannot handle that is a tough task they have to look after the children their grandparents their parents the meetings in the school pta meetings whatever it may be and lot of other household work also so it's a multitasking that everyone cannot handle so large number of female doctors are coming out from the colleges but only few of them practice in for the majority of them are simple surviving as a housewife and the parents of the lady doctor want to have a well settled son in law but they don't want their daughter to get settled first and then to get her married that's a scenario in, in, in indian culture and some rich family is keeping lady doctors as trophy wife that means my son married a doctor they don't need the money from the prior prior practice or the higher qualification of the sister in law as a trophy wife and the third point the comfortable laziness in many ladies after the marriage and that is one major reason majority of them are not practice they are simply surviving or the going through the job as a housewife only not utilizing the time not utilizing what they studied or trained in the last 5 and 1/2 years simply living as a housewife a comfortable laziness now always remember that the female doctors really need support from the family in order to establish and flourish their clinic they really need support from the family so the girl on the left that is herding sheep in morocco see the girl on the left side the same woman on the right side after 20 years the education minister in france after 20 years as an education minister in the france so ladies never stop dreaming and never stop working hard for your dreams never stop dreaming a bus conductor's daughter beats odds to become the best ips trainee so perseverance and focus can make one overcome any challenges perseverance and focus can make one overcome any challenges if a lady really love her profession she can practice as male doctors attitude that determines everything remember the attitude that determines our altitude if a lady really love her profession she can practice as male doctors but always remember some support from the family is always recur so never waste your life simply as a housewife you studied lot of things and you trained in the last 5 and 1/2 years or plus 3 years for the post graduation so even though your husband has a good have a good income it is better to have your own income okay so let the girl fulfill their dreams give them books and not husband now we will give, we'll discuss some rules and regulations that is required that you, you you must be thorough with this rules and regulation before setting up a clinic so everything comes under the dangerous and offensive drug license affidavit the registration rules this may vary from state to state and we are discussing about this scenario in kerala this is more or less similar in other state also registration free that the rules that mean you have to apply in form 1 to the panchayat or the corporation secretary 15 days before the commencement of your clinic you have to apply 
Form 3, that is a certificate from the Panjayat. Form 4, register in the existing clinic. And Form 5, renewal of registration. And the validity is financial year. You have to renew your clinic re registration every year. Fee, that is a 200 for the fresh application and rupees 50 for the renewal. And the documents uh, required. Application plus 5 rupee court fee stamp. DNO license, that means uh, that is previously explained as a dangerous and offensive drug license affidavit, dangerous and offensive uh, license self declaration, and NOC from the building owner, authorization from the pollution control board, and san sanitation certificates. These are all the documents that you have to submit along with your application form to the concerned panchayat, the municipality, or the corporation. And you have to pay the professional tax also. This is depending upon the how much you are earning a maximum of 1250 that's the professional tax required and the documents needed for the corporation area application plus 5 rupee in court fee stamp request in plain paper rupees 5 stamp affidavit license of for the rupees with the rupees 200 noc from the building owner building tax copy noc from the town planning noc from the pollution control board noc from the dmo of homeo if you are starting a clinic in a corporation area, you may need NOC from the DMO also. And if you are not uh, submitting these documents or renewing your, either renewing your license, the clinic fine is 5000. 5000. So that's all for the time being. Uh, we will discuss something more in the next video. So please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So professionalism in clinical practice. So that's all for the time being. If you have any queries or doubt, then just post in the comment box that is available in the YouTube. And the part two of this, that, is, that means how to market your clinic, that will be uploaded in the YouTube soon. How to market your clinic. So that's all for the time being. Thank you.